What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Weeb Garden. Today we've got a lot going on. In this video I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to be potting up my pepper plants. I've got some Korean hot peppers, I've got some bell peppers. I've been hardening them off so they're ready to go. In addition to that I'm going to show you guys how to transplant your seed starts into larger pots before they go outside. So I've got a couple lemon cucumbers and a couple eggplants. So I'll show you how I'm going to take the little seed starts and put them in larger pots. That way they can continue to grow and be ready to be transplanted outdoors sometime in the next month. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned and uh, let's get started. Okay, so to do this, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're going to need, obviously, the plants you're going to transplant. In this case, I've got a few eggplants and then I have two lemon cucumbers. I planted one here but it never germinated so I've got two here ready to go. Um, and then you're going to need some seed starting mix. So this mix is one that I made and I will show you how to make this mix later but all it really is is I believe it's cocoa core and worm castings mixed together along with some perlite and the perlite are these little rocks here and all these do is they create a little bit of oxygen like some airflow and space in the soil and they also absorb <laughs> and they also absorb moisture really well so when you water them it retains that water really really well so we're going to basically pot these transplants into these these are little two and a half inch pots um, and these nursery pots are really, really good for this type of transplanting. So all of these plants will go into one of these, and then this will be the last place they get transplanted until they go outside into their larger container, which will be their permanent home. So all we really need to do, and the first thing we have to do, is just fill up the pot. So I'm using a spoon here, but you can just use your hands if you want. And I'm gonna pat it down just to make sure it's not too loose. It gives the roots a good amount of space to, to grow and spread out. And then add some more to the top. Basically filling up to this line here. So there's like a little line all around the edge of these little pots. So I'm just putting just enough to fill it up to that point. And that one is filled up. Now, let's do an eggplant first. So what we'll do is we'll set this aside and then we'll take the eggplant cell here. We'll flip it and we're gonna put our fingers here to hold it. We're not gonna squeeze this. We're just gonna put our fingers right here around the, the soil so when it falls out, we'll be able to catch it. And we'll take the bottom and just gently squeeze it. And it should just fall right out. And so you can kind of see it's got some roots growing, not too much. It's not bound by any means. All we're going to do is take our finger here and make a bit of a hole, just big enough to fit this inside of it. We'll push it down and that is ready to go. So now I'll just take my seed flat and put this right in here and we'll put all of our plants in here. So let's go ahead and do the cucumber next. All right, so same idea. We're gonna take one of these pots and just fill it with our starter mix, just like that, pat it down. No one need to pat it like super tight, but just enough to get some of the air out. And you'll notice it goes down a little bit and that's pretty good right there. I'll make a nice sized hole right there. See how spacious that is? Maybe you can, I don't know. Um, <laughs> make a nice spacious hole so that the roots can get in there nice and comfortably. And that way we don't cause transplant shock or at least not too much of it to where the plant doesn't recover. Okay, so same thing here. We're gonna take the cucumber and the cucumbers you can kind of spot. There's a ton of roots coming out of the cucumber plant. We're just going to place our fingers here to secure, just to provide a little safety net for it. So that's one thing about cucumbers is they are very, very, uh, 
heavy feeders and they grow really large roots. And to be honest, this is probably too, too much roots for this particular cell. Probably should have done this a little bit sooner, but finally we're out of there. All right. So we've got all of this root here, which is just from this one plant. Look at all that. So we're going to make plenty of space here and just drop the whole thing in right there gently and then just use some soil mix here to kind of secure it and cover those roots up. Push it down a little bit if you need to. And there we go. We are potted up. We'll go ahead and set it in the tray. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process for the other eggplant and cucumber plants here and we will check back in a bit. The one thing I wanted to show here is you notice how the roots are really wrapping around here. One thing you could do a little bit is just kind of shake it, shake the bottom a little bit and loosen out some of that dirt, some of that starter mix and just allow the roots to kind of spread a little bit more and this won't hurt it. You don't want to do this too much and stress the plant out, but now you can kind of see a little bit. The roots are either pointing out or they are pointing down and then they can kind of grow into the soil mix here a little bit more. So now they're ready to just place in, push it down a little bit, cover up those roots. Maybe use a little bit more of that soil there. And that's it for that one. All right, we'll do the rest of the eggplant here. If we can, I might only have enough mix for one more. Just flip it, squeeze it. And there it is. Drop it right in there. Okay, let's see what we got. Ooh. That'll do. So this isn't necessarily up all the way to that line. Um, I don't think it's going to be, given how little of the mix that I have left. And I think that'll be fine, because this is really just a temporary home for this plant. We'll make the hole right there. Flip this upside down, just like before. Kind of loosen up some of this dirt here. And then drop this right down. There it is. Empty that out. I'll have to rinse this out later and reuse it. But that's it. All right, so now that we've transplanted the cucumber and the eggplant, it is time to get them back on the shelf. So this is one of my grow shelves. It's just a bookshelf that I put a lot of my figurines and stuff on. And I just have some LED grow lights mounted here, but this is where we're going to put it because it has a good amount of space. It's not too bright. It's not too not bright, <laughs> I guess. But this is where we're going to plant it. So I need to scoot this over to make some room. And then we'll place these right here. And let's go ahead and just scoot everything over so that they're right under the light. And then in this little I don't know, half gallon jug here, quarter gallon jug, third gallon. This little water thing, <laughs> this little water canister has some water soluble fertilizer, which is just fertilizer that you mix with water and it's diluted pretty significantly. I think the uh, NPK are like a 20, 20, 20. So this is like diluted to a 10th of that. So whatever measurement, it gives me to put in a gallon of water. I cut that to like one fifth to one tenth, mix it into the water. And uh, yeah, so we just pour it on the bottom and all this moisture is just going to soak up from the bottom of those little containers through the holes in the bottom and feed these plants. And this will actually be really helpful because they were just planted. They probably have a little bit of shock 
and I think the and I think the uh, nutrients will come in handy in their recovery. So that's about that. Um, now I'm out of seed start mix, so I'm going to show you how I make my own seed starting mix using a block of cocoa core and worm casting. So here we go. All right, when you're making mix for seed starting, you want to use very neutral ingredients. You don't need any fertilizer when you're planting your seeds. You just want something that's going to hold water and allow your seeds to germinate, develop roots, and get enough nutrients to grow and survive. So you're going to need a single block of peat moss or cocoa core and a container about five times its size. And these little blocks produce a ton of starter materials, so give yourself some wiggle room. You're also going to need worm castings, which is totally optional here, but worm castings provide nutrients to the seeds, and I've had really great success adding worm castings to the mix. Then you're going to need some perlite or vermiculite, which is a rock-like material that absorbs and retains water, while also creating space for the root systems to grow. Altogether, this recipe will be three parts peat moss or cocoa core, one part worm castings, and one part perlite or vermiculite. I'm also going to use about three quarters of a gallon of boiling hot water to hydrate and sterilize the core block. You could use cold or room temperature water for this, but sometimes fungus gnat eggs are in these things, especially when you get this in uncompressed bags instead of blocks. And the boiling water is going to sterilize it and kill off any of those fungus gnats ahead of time so you don't have a bigger problem in your home. So the first thing you need to do is add the boiling water to your block. Use small amounts of boiling water at a time so that you're able to hydrate the block without oversaturating it. Use a mixing spoon of some kind to stir it around and don't use your hands because it's hot water and you'll hurt yourself. So don't do that. That's a that's a big no-no. When you're done, simply use a lid or some aluminum foil to cover it and let it rest for a few hours to overnight. You want this thing to be cool to the touch or at least room temperature. You don't want to be burning yourself or burning your seeds. All right, after a few hours, just take the lid off Use a spoon or your hand to make some space to the side and add your worm castings. So use about half to equal parts worm castings and mix. Stir it together and then add your perlite or your vermiculite and mix that together. And that's about it. Now you're ready to start some seeds. I'm starting an Armenian cucumber here. And so I'm gonna plant two in this two and a half inch container. And whichever one germinates first is the one I'm gonna keep. And then I'm going to place it in my seed flat and start another pot. I'm going to plant another cucumber, but this time instead of an Armenian, it's going to be a Honey Plus cucumber. And just like before, I'm going to plant two of them and pick whichever one germinates first. Now I'm just going to set it in the seed flat with the other cucumber plant and get it ready to water. And that's about it. Seed start mix done, planting done, these are ready to grow. pepper I'll be planting is a purple beauty bell pepper. To do this, I'm going to use an 8 gallon grow bag and fill it most of the way with my soil mixture. And this mixture has peat moss, some wood shavings, and chicken manure, and it's the same mix I use for my tomatoes and cucumbers. Then I'm going to add my organic fertilizer which has an NPK of 444 and I'm going to mix it in by hand. You could use any organic fertilizer you have at home. The numbers don't all have to be the same. Just get as close to a 555 as you can. Once it's mixed in, I'm going to top it off with some more of my soil and then gently drop the container on the ground to flatten the surface and round the container out. Now I'm going to dig a hole in the middle of the soil roughly the size of the container of my pepper plant and then I'm going to place my hand on the plant's soil, flip the plant over, and gently squeeze and wiggle the container until it slides right off without any resistance. 
Then I'm gonna loosen some of the soil and the roots at the bottom and gently place it into the hole before securing it into place with the soil. I'm being careful not to bury it too deep since these peppers don't develop surface roots like the tomato or cucumber plants. And then from here, I'm gonna use bark to add a layer of mulch, which will help keep moisture in the soil while preventing soil splatter when I water it. And that's gonna help prevent soil borne disease. Then I'm using this really strong water soluble fertilizer that has a really high MPK of 12, 15, 30. And I'm diluting it to just under half strength in a two gallon water jug. And I'm gonna water my plant with the fertilizer. I'm doing this because the plant might've experienced some shock and these nutrients can be absorbed by the roots immediately and give it a little bit of strength. And that's about it. Purple Beauty Bell Pepper planted. Now I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing, but for my Korean hot peppers and some of the other bell peppers I'm gonna plant. The yellow bags I'm using are about twice as large as the other container bags. So I'm gonna be putting two hot pepper plants in one and two bell pepper plants in the other. And then the smaller black bag will be yet another bell pepper. But I'm not done yet. I have another three gallon container I can use to plant one more pepper, and that's what I'm doing here. But that's not all. I have four more pepper plants, and I have a four foot wide planter, so I'm gonna use that thing to plant those peppers in exactly the same way, using the same soil mix, same fertilizer, everything. The entire process is exactly the same, just applied to this planter. And now we are done. All right, it's been a couple of days since we planted the pepper plants, got them all set up in their containers. Let's go outside and see how they are doing after just a couple of days. So I've mentioned it's been cold in California. And so one thing I'm seeing a lot of are these little cucumber flowers popping in. This is a little bit too early for them to be flowering, so we want all of the energy to go towards leaf and vine development. So we're gonna twist and just pull these off as much as we can. Otherwise, the snails seem to have begun minding their own business. Okay, here's some of the pepper plants. So first thing we wanna do is just check under the leaves for any pests that might be eating at these. But I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, nothing really at all. Let's check these. These are, what are these? Pinot Noir peppers. Which are purple bell peppers. Oh, there. That's a little white fly. Let's get rid of that. And you're here. So basically I want to do this check for every plant, including our tomatoes. See, there, there's a little bit of leaf damage here, but this is less from a pest and more just from the wind and it's probably hitting this pole. So I'm not super worried about that. We may come back out and trim this off, but see there's new growth, new growth in the middle of the vine here, which is great. Let's just wipe off whatever that is. Okay, nothing too crazy or detrimental. Here's another example of a cucumber flower growing in. We'll just take that, pull it off. Okay, so here's a red bell pepper. Looks pretty okay. Pretty okay. All right, let's check these guys out. We've got a purple beauty pepper. nothing crazy here you really want to check the younger plants too because a lot of bugs snails 
really like the younger, less mature plants for some reason. Everything is looking really good. These are the Korean hot peppers. Looks good. So key takeaway, always check for early flowering, pick off those flowers and check for pests and bugs and bug damage after you've planted everything the next day, next couple of days, because they will come out and attack. So there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and water these and we'll check back in a bit. So that was a busy week, we did a lot. We planted up a whole bunch of peppers, 10 different pepper plants, and I still have two more to go. So, so we're gonna be doing that soon. We created our own seed starting mix, and I gave you an update on how all of the pepper plants are doing a couple days after having been transplanted. Did they suffer transplant shock? Probably a little bit, but they're growing now and they are sturdy and healthy. We've been able to mitigate the snails issue. It's been cold in California, so I expect to be seeing those little flowers developing on the cucumber plants. And we'll just prune those off until we get some good solid growth and warmer weather. And then the plant will be in a good place to start developing the actual flowers and pollinators that we will need in order to grow the really nice cucumber varieties that we are growing. So stay tuned for that. I'll also be getting into how I'm going to take care of the tomatoes, prune them, tie them to their stakes or their cages. And also, since we created our own seed starting mix, I'll show you how to grow indoor tomatoes. In fact, there are a bunch of my indoor tomatoes. These are red veranda tomatoes, or red veranda tomatoes, um, and they grow little, very flavorful cherry tomatoes. You can see all of these flowers starting to bloom. Each of these flowers that you see are going to likely be a tomato, and this thing is doing really, really well. There are, how many plants are in here? There's two plants in here. There's one plant here and this one in the back. We've got three in this pot and then one in this pot. So kind of experimenting between one, two, and three plants per six inch pot. But I'll show you how I seed start those, how I transplant them, and how I take care of them in the upcoming video. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, we got a lot done. Thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed the video, learned something, leave a like, leave a comment on what you'd like to see in some upcoming videos, and I'll do my best to deliver on that. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining me on this gardening endeavor. I'm looking forward to seeing how everything turns out this year. Um, and hopefully you're growing some cool stuff too. Leave a note in the comments what you're growing. And uh, we'd love to hear Hear what you got going on. Anyway, <laughs> that about covers it. Thank you for joining. Appreciate the time. Like, subscribe, and uh, let's grow together. Take care. Bye.